Well, I, you know, when we first saw the Bioshock Infinite cover art, it was actually like when we were at the, the demo uh, for our first kind of peek at the game when uh, Rational came by the office. It was really interesting. They actually showed us what they had as a basic design for the cover to start off with that was um, in, in like this big CG render with zeppelins and everything flying in the sky. Uh, and then they were like, oh, and here's the cover that we're thinking about doing, and then here's some concept art we've got. Generally, when we do covers um, for people, it's, it's usually a render. And um, we were planning on doing it this time, actually, because we, we, we assume that's what, um, that's what, that is what Game Informer would want. And um, however, they saw this image um, that Rob Waters had done. And as they started to go through the concept art, was when we got a chance to see uh, She and Him, uh, which was basically one of the covers we have, which you'll notice is Elizabeth out touching him, which is the giant kind of analog to a big daddy in the new game. Elizabeth and him um, standing next to each other. And it showed, I think, I think it's a beautiful image because it, it, and it was one of our key images because it, it showed for the first time really the relationship between those two characters mm -hmm. and how they might interact with each other and the, sort of some of the interesting complexities of those in that relationship. Um, whether he's good or bad, we don't really know yet, but uh, you, you see him in, in some of the trailers and in some of the screenshots. But basically, we saw that imagery and we were like, we want that. Uh, and that kind of started the ball rolling for us, was that um, we wanted to do something that was uh, revolving around that piece of art. And so, actually, uh, Rational got back to us and said, hey, you know, we really think this is a cool idea. What if we made it uh, old school and made it like fit like in the time of Columbia? And we were like, Sure, go crazy. I mean, anytime uh, when someone comes up like a rational and says that they want to try to do some design, like really like crazy design stuff on our covers, it's it's really kind of a slam dunk for us because that's kind of the trick for Reiner, Reiner and I is is in Game Informer as a whole is that we like we like to let the artists do their thing and and that was the first time we saw that and then over the coming months we kept getting little bits and pieces of the various different covers that they were going to try and every one we saw we were like oh wow <laughs> and uh, Andy really responded to that and he said well why don't we do use this for a cover and um, I went home that night and I started thinking about that and you know the original plan was we'd have Rob um, you know do a sort of more polished version of that illustration and then I started looking at um, Saturday evening post covers um, from the period which was a, a, an American magazine, a very sort of iconic American magazine. Yeah, the silhouette was almost already a Saturday Evening Post image sure. to begin with, so like the, looking at the magazines of the time and seeing the image is kind of like, hmm, like these things are going to fit together. Well, all the, all the Saturday Evening Post covers, you know, some were done by Nancy Wyeth, you know, many were done by Norman Rockwell, I think that's the one that uh, people most associate, and Line Decker. Um, they always had a really strong sense of single image narrative, um, which I think appealed to us, and Rob was able to quickly jump in and start, you know, creating things in that form. The, the well. covers are interesting because they're 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 very formal and they're very artificial in a way. Because they're, they're 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 it's always like a flat plane right. um, to the to the camera, you know, the, uh, the eye of the artist. And there's some usually an element of formality, or or, or there's often an element of ornamentation on the page, which is sure. not actually in the scene, but sort of presented as in the scene. And there's just some really, really beautiful images if you look back at Right. Them. I mean, it was a golden age of illustration. That's where you first start to see, and that's how you see those graphic elements coming in. Is those magazine covers sit sort of on the on the cusp of, of the old way and the new way of dealing with graphic design. You know, that magazine sort of defined it. But they were color, too. Yeah, yeah, color. Yeah, they were color. That was yeah. relatively new for the yeah. time. And highly detailed, yet very simplistic if you, if you look at the silhouette, usually, of those images. I talked to uh, Ken Levine on the phone, and... Uh, he pretty much outlined uh, recreating the Saturday Evening Post straight down to the ads on the back, and I was like, "Boy, I don't know, I don't know how I pitch this to Andy. Like, hey, can we do a, a 1900s <laughs> cover?" But uh, they were quick in sending us some samples uh, from the Saturday Evening, and uh, you know, we we just kind of envisioned what that artwork of what you call it, she and him, would be like on there, and uh, we we went for it, and, and they sent us samples, and. Uh, Obviously, you see the art yourselves. It, it turned out really well. It did turn out great.